You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Well, uh, you know, we cover a lot of different investment theses. On this show, we want you to uh, to know that you have alternatives, you have choices, and uh, hey, here's one that I really like. I think you'll like it as well. And that is investing in fine wines and whiskey. Uh, for years, you've been able to buy futures and Bordeaux futures, Burgundy futures, uh, wines have historically, fine wines have historically outperformed many of the indices over the years. And uh, the past several years has been no exception with returns in the double digit level. Even last year in 22, uh, 15% in 22, far out, outperforming the market with a bullish, uh, a bullish. <laughs> You know what happened in 22, 15.3%. That's pretty darn good. And uh, when I heard about it, I said, I want to talk to this guy, see how you can invest in fine wines and uh, spirits. Uh, it's kind of an alternative investment sector. So Maxwell Neat is on with us now, a uh, managing partner of Ono Own Wine and in whiskey investment. And hey, you won lots of awards for this, Maxwell. Uh, how'd you wind up uh, being in the fine wine and spirits investment sector? Yeah, great question. Thank you so much. So I'm originally from Australia, but I've been living in Europe uh, for about the last five years or so. And wine and whiskey investment comes from Europe. Um, you know, I've always loved and enjoyed the assets, um, you know, as a consumer. But uh, something really hit me. One time I was in um, Chicago um at a bar uh, as like a really swanky really nice bar and um the bartender asked me what do you want to drink and then I, he says i said uh, an old-fashioned i said oh but i like it with whiskey instead of bourbon um so then he he says you know what would you like a mccallan 12 and mccallan 18. so mccallan is a bit like the ferrari of whiskey and uh what i know about the 12 and the 18 is that one's 12 years old one's 18 and the difference between the two is that the 18 has just been sitting in a warehouse, you know, for an additional six years. That's the only difference. So I ordered the the 18 and I drink it. It's delicious. It's, it's you know, I've never had an 18 before. It was incredible. Gave it to my friend. He drank about half of it. He hates whiskey, but he said, wow, this is delicious. <laughs> That's and Scott then, whiskey. That's Scott. Yeah, right. I met the distiller of McAllen one time. And uh, so so an idea was hatched, huh? Yeah, and... and um, then I asked the bartender, I said, oh, how much was this glass again? And he said, 125. And I said, no, 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 not how much is a tab. How much was this glass here? And he said, 125. And I thought, shit, well, I'm committed now. 125 uh, US dollars plus tip, right, for one drink. And I said, how much was the, um, the 12? And he said, 25. I thought, wow. So, you know, the difference between these two drinks is that one's been sitting in a warehouse six years longer but the value creation is 500% in six years. And I thought, you know, you can't, you, you know, I, I've never been able to beat that in property, never been able to beat that in stock market, never been able to beat that in any of other investments. So that that started to formulate an idea in my mind that there's something happening here with these assets and in how they appreciate and value. And then I slowly became an investor and then eventually became a managing partner of this company. Interesting. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, I personally have found that I like the 12 better than the 18, uh, but that's just my opinion. Um, I've got a few bottles of each around here. Uh, but uh, what about cognac? We we getting into any cognacs? No. So cognac, um, it's... So the, the reason why wine and whiskey work in this business model is because they appreciate with age, whether it's in the barrel or it's, it's, it's in the 
um, mm-hmm. it's still in the bottle. You know, the fact that wine appreciates an age after it's been bottled makes it very, very exceptional um, for how we can trade it over time and, you know, almost trade it like a stock over time. Yeah. Okay, so cognac, uh, not so much. And- yeah, cognac, tequila, gin, uh, not so much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are... Uh, I was in a uh, place in the Bahamas, prided it in a gray cliff, uh, prided itself on the largest uh, cognac and Armagnac collection in the world, some that went back 150 years. So obviously in that situation, yes, but uh, we don't want to wait 150 years for our spirits to uh, go up 10 or 20 times when you have other choices. So what has been the best performing bottle in your portfolio? Oh, good question in my portfolio. Um, I won't say the name because it, it's in Italian and I can't say it properly, but um, Italian bottle, there's a few Italian bottles in my portfolio that are doing really, really well. Um, you know, there's a few reasons for that. Italy uh, make exceptional wine value for money. Um, the, the prices have really moved and the market's really caught on to them. Um, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're up and coming in terms of how they market themselves and how they want to push their prices, how they want to compete with the French, you know, French wines will always do really well, but French wines are uh, more or less blue chip, so to speak. So they so the, the market, um, for French wines, whether it's Bordeaux or Burgundy is, is quite mature. So you, if you want that, that real alpha and that upswing and, you know, potentially a hockey stick, you want to be looking broader than. Um, what you might traditionally be thinking as a wine investor. Okay, so what do you think the uh, best up-and-coming market for wines is? Oh, good question. So as of right now, it's probably um, Italian. There's also some good wines coming out of Napa, specifically Napa, right? Not California because you want Napa. Napa has, the Napa Valley has that global brand. It's really important to to invest in wines that could be sold and that are, highly desired in all parts of the world because you don't want to limit yourself to your exit opportunities. Um, you know, Spain is coming along a bit slower than than Italy, but it is coming along. Um, also, investment grade uh, in the world that has really popped off in the last um, 12, 24 months is Champagne. So most people don't really notice or realize that Champagne is, is, a, is actually a fine wine, but it is. And uh, it's pretty simple why it's popped off in the last 12, 24 months. You know, the world hasn't traveled for two, three years. Um, if you haven't traveled for two, three years, you haven't, um, well, what do you do? You know, you you book a flight, you book, probably book business class because you've got three years worth of holidays and you're itching to get out there to other parts of the world and have a good time. Um, what's the first thing that happens when you go to the lounge of a business class lounge? They open up champagne. Then you go into the plane, what's the first thing that happens? They offer you a glass of champagne. Then you land, the chauffeur picks you up, he offers you a glass of champagne, then you get to the hotel, then they offer you a glass of champagne. And then you're probably there for your friend's wedding because there's three years of weddings that didn't happen that are all happening at the same time. So there's three X amount of champagne toasting happening around the world all at the same time. So, you know, these assets take 10 years to make and 10 seconds to open. So it's 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 pretty clear to see um, how that's picked up recently. And it'll probably pick up a little bit more because um, there's been so much supply has been sucked out of the market and drunk that um, some of these providers might not be able to to recoup um, and and meet the demand for their current supply. All right. Well, so uh, they're making up for lost time and exactly. lost parties, <laughs> and that's that's uh, that's kind of the fascinating there. Um, you know, I I just would uh, wish we had a chart so we could compare. The returns from uh, wines and spirits. I mean, I have friends, you know, where I live. Uh, many people have their own wine cellars. I wasn't one of them. I like to drink it. I like to get it and drink it. I don't like to keep it around. But they were buying Bordeaux futures 25 years ago, which I thought was an insane thing to do. There was even an article in Barron's about it that it is a ridiculous way to invest. And uh, they proved me wrong because the really fine Bordeaux, the uh, you know uh, Lafitte Rothschilds, et cetera, Oupriant, all of them, they went up so much faster than the rate of inflation and every other investment that it made me shake my head. 
So you've got a unique way. So you have one of two ways to invest, if I understand it correctly, Maxwell, and correct me if I don't. Uh, number one is you run a fund. Basically, you got a warehouse, you got all this wine there, and you're buying, and then you're selling it, and you're taking 10% off the, t off the profits, and that's it. No storage, no nothing. The other way is if, it's a, if you have a family office or you're a uh, wealthy private investor, you will uh, actually uh, handle acquisition and disposition of those bottles as well. Do I have that right? Don't just survive, thrive. The Financial Survival Network. Gold Terra Resource Corp. is a gold exploration company that has assembled a highly prospective district-scale land position on the doorstep of the city of Yellowknife in Canada's Northwest Territories. Gold Terra is currently focused on expanding and delineating gold resources at the company's Yellowknife City Gold Project with the goal of discovering over 5 million ounces. With ready access to infrastructure and multiple high-grade gold discoveries, Gold Terra is on track to re-establishing Yellowknife as one of the premier gold mining districts in Canada. Gold Terra trades as YGT in Toronto and YGTFF on the OTC. For more information, go to goldterracorp.com. That's goldterracorp.com. This is the Financial Survival Network, the information you need to thrive now more than ever. Yeah, the, the other way around. So there's, yes, there's two products, right? Uh, the first product is um, we help you to build your own wine and whiskey collection. Um, where we, we will manage it for you. You know, we don't take any management fees. We don't take any um, any performance fee until you cash out. Uh, we take 10% of net profit. So that's what we call essentially like our portfolio product. We've been doing that for nine years now. Um, our returns on that over the last um, four years has been 11%, 12%, 15%, 15%. 15%. So it's, it's done, you know, quite well, especially in uh, recent economic instabilities um and what is brand new to the business is a delaware investment fund that uh we are launching this month actually and uh, the De delaware investment fund is set up um pretty identical to like a pe fund so it's a five-year lockup with everything out at the end uh fees are two and twenty okay two and twenty like a hedge fund so you got the first wine hedge fund going out there uh, accredited investors only, I would assume, and yes. the minimum yes. uh, investment in that fund. Yeah, so the minimum investment in the fund, um, it will be 500000 but for this initial series, we have accepted people as low as uh, 100000 if you want to, to come get involved. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like really good. Uh, so the product uh, is going to be uh, stored where? Yeah, so there's a gold standard for storing and aging these assets uh, called London City Bond. So, you know, for example, the, the royal family keeps um, some of their uh, prized possessions there. It's a 150-year-old um, institution that has about seven locations, and um, it's government regulated. It's very important for where you store these assets to be government regulated because uh, we, when we buy and trade these assets, we trade them for their true value before sales and alcohol tax has been added. So they're actually more like commodities like gold and oil and silver compared to consumable goods. They haven't been brought into the consumable market yet. Uh, we bring them into that market where we look to exit them. Okay. Um, hey, so who do you buy the wines from? Because quality is everything here. They had to have been stored properly. They had to have been transported gingerly. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into this. So you obviously are, have to deal with very trusted uh, wine merchants. Yeah. So we are a wine merchant. So we buy direct from the producer as much as possible. Yeah. Probably 80, 90% of the time we buy direct from the producer. And all of this stuff is insured. And what happens if uh, seven years from now you go to sell it, the wine has gone bad. Are you insured for that or is that uh, you take the hit? Yeah, so no one insures for that. No one insures for corked wine. Um, but what we do provide our clients, because you know, if you're if you're investing a hundred thousand dollars or even ten thousand dollars, the last thing you want to worry about is, um, you know, your investment is vinegar. <laughs> yeah. You just don't, you just shouldn't have to worry about that. So we we provide our clients. Well, one of the only companies that does it um, 
a perfect stop promise where if it's been calls on on our watch uh, before it's been sold that uh, we will absorb that either replace it for the same bottle if we can find it uh, or the monetary value so a number of years ago in Miami I live in Florida uh, there's a famous restaurant called the Forge and they had one of the uh, top wine collections of any restaurant in the country and they had a fire and they claimed that uh, due to the smoke and uh, you know all the all the stuff coming out of the uh, fire that uh, their wine collection was destroyed and they wanted the insurance company to pay him five million bucks and the insurance company was debating whether or not the wine was really bad eh, you know fumes smoke isn't so bad the wine still tastes good and they're saying they had the battle of the wine experts oh this this bordeaux uh it tastes burned you know i said it, i've got chunks of whatever in it and uh I don't know what happened. I think they went to trial. I believe they won. But if you know any different out there, let me know because I'd love to hear. But, uh, you know, that's just one of the things that can happen with wine like anything else. Probably safer to to uh, store the whiskey and the spirits than it is the wine. The wine really continues aging. The uh, stuff in the bottle really doesn't. Really. Uh yeah, so wine still does age in the bottle, but uh, whiskey, yeah, whiskey stops aging once it's been bottled. And then it's then it's a rarity collectible <clears throat> forces scarcity, uh, not being able to replace it from that particular year or whatever, right? So that's why the price goes up. Yeah, but it's not just that, you know. So if there was a fire at a place, um, I dare say that a lot of the... Um, if there was smoke coming into the wine room, I dare say that a lot of a lot of the labels would have start to be damaged. So you know, if you're at a restaurant and you're there and you're about to make a toast and you just swiped your credit card for a ten thousand dollar bottle of wine, you want an immaculate label. You know, so that that's a part of uh, the storage as well. Like if you don't have a perfectly perfect condition bottle, including the label, um, that's just isn't good enough you know it isn't good enough for kind of establishment yeah yeah this was in uh i think it was in uh 1991 this happened i think the restaurant is closed also which is kind of depressing as heck to me but uh yeah the forge was a classic miami restaurant and uh yeah it uh <laughs> they have millions of dollars of wine and i'm gonna find out what happened and i'll put the results in the show notes because uh, now I'm really uh, curious here. But uh, hey, it sounds like a really interesting way to invest uh, if, you've got, uh, if you've got the uh, funds to do it, the resources. Hey, um, how do we find out more about this, Maxwell? How do we connect with you uh, on the internet? And how do we invest? Yeah, great question. So um, you know, I can share my email. I can share... Uh, in the show notes, uh, but I'm I'm pretty addicted to LinkedIn. So if you message me on there, you will catch me. My name is Maxwell, like uh, Maxwell Smart. Uh, knee, which is November Echo Echo N W E. I'm the only Maxwell Knee on LinkedIn. Um, if you want to learn a bit more about the company, uh, if you Google us, it's spelt uh, October Echo November October O N O O E N O. Uh, group.com and um, and you can learn a bit more about us you know you'll see me on the website you can reach out to me there request that you want to speak to me and you know we talk about the options you know do you want to have a collection an investment where you own some of them um, or do you want are you happy to just use it purely invest purely in a financial instrument of which our Delaware fund our new Delaware fund is probably the best option for you all right excellent well we really appreciate you coming on fascinating investment concept i can see the value in it if you got a question for uh maxwell or myself shoot me an email kl at carryletz.com uh remember go over to the site financial survival network.com you'll find maxwell's links there and while you're at it sign up for your free newsletter maxwell pleasure to have you on thanks so much for stopping by nice no, my pleasure thank you for having me 
Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.